Okay, this is the first lab in uh, Physics 115, and it's designed for you to see what the data looks like as something plummets to the ground and to measure the acceleration of gravity and to learn Excel. Okay, you want to answer these questions first. These come from Chapter 2, but hey, you can look in a book and do the equations. So the first one is a ball drop from rest falls at 1.5 meters in 0 0.56 seconds. Calculate the acceleration of gravity. So what we're going to do in this case is take the base equation and rewrite it and solve for gravity as a magnitude. In number two, the ball is released with an initial downward velocity of 0.2 meters per second. Using 9.8 meters per second squared as the value for the gravitational acceleration, calculate how far it will fall in one second. We're using the same equation, but now we're inputting gravity and we're solving for the displacement. The displacement in this case should be negative. Okay, this is a little bit about statistics, and I've written the statistical formulas below. You'll also see them in that lab extract, a more fuller description of statistics. A student drops a ball from a height of 40 centimeters and measures the following times for four separate trials. 0 0.286, 0 0.270, 0 0.293, and 0.295 seconds. Calculate the mean time and the standard deviation of the mean. So in here we have three equations that are statistical. The mean is essentially in this case an average. Add them up, divide by four. And then this is the standard deviation. How far can it be off of a given number before it's considered crap data? This is one standard deviation. So it's the square root of 1 over n minus 1. So in this case, n minus 1 would be 3 times the summation of each number minus the mean quantity squared. So each of these, of these would be positive numbers. You add them all up. You divide by 3. You take the square root of that. And that's the standard deviation. And then you want the last function, which is going to be how far is the standard deviation from the mean. And in this case, you take that and divide by the square root of 4, which is 2. And you get the natural variance. The next one over there is to simply determine the slope of the curve. In this case, what you're doing is finding out gravity. This is taken from the average velocity, which would be half of the final velocity in this case, because gravity is constant. And the equation you see on the side was taken by computer fitting versus just drawing the straight line. Now, how would we draw the straight line? What we would simply do is take two points that match on a grid and take rise over run. That would be in centimeters per second squared. And then we would multiply it by 2 because we know that we need to compensate for it being average. OK. On the left, you'll see what a standard tape would look like miniaturized to match this PowerPoint. You can see that each set of dots is farther apart from the next. This would indicate that you're under acceleration. And the values are in centimeters. And the dot spacing is always 1 60th of a second here. And so we're measuring the acceleration of gravity. And we can also calculate what the initial velocity was when it dropped from the plumb bob. And so over here on the side table, you can see the rough setup we would be using in the lab room. 
So you have the bare free fall device, two meter sticks, masking tape so you can tape the tape firmly down to a table, a spark timer that will give you one sixtieth of a second dot, a low voltage power supply to hold the block the bob in place that's going to be dropping down, and the timing tape, which is a tape impregnated with chalk dust. So we attach the electromagnet to the low voltage power supply. We attach the bare free fall bot device to the uh, spark timer. We put the tape in as indicated. And then we attach the plumb bob to the electrified uh, electromagnet. And then while holding down the spark timer switch, we turn off the electromagnet and it will spark, setting off the curves. So very simple, easy, quick data taking. And we found we can hold the electromagnet to as low as two volts without damage. And again on the side you see the results of the tape. Okay, since I can't be in the classroom because the cops will catch me, I put a schematic here to where you can see that there's a wire in front and a wire in back of the tape. The cylinder drops between the two wires, allowing a spark gap. This is roughly 3,000 volts per millimeter. So the gap has to be relatively narrow. If the gap isn't narrow enough, it won't spark and you'll get bad data. So like I said, the cops caught me the last time, so I can't get in to tape this for you, but I found this online and it's a relatively good example of the system. So please watch this before moving on. Stop it. Watch this before it moves on and then start the PowerPoint again. Thank you.